Hey everyone, and welcome to another episode of Brett's Brain. Today, we're going to talk about ICP, our ideal customer profile and what it means and why it's important. Hey, I'm Brett Brule, former entrepreneur, current venture capitalist. Thanks so much for checking out these videos. Make sure you share, like, subscribe, do all those things. Our goal here is to help entrepreneurs succeed. So hopefully we helped you a little bit. And if you have a question for us that you'd like us to answer in a future video, make sure you let us know. I'd be happy to cover it. Okay, ICP is one of those things you hear thrown around in the venture space and entrepreneurship space. It stands for Ideal Customer Profile. What's that mean? Really simply, Ideal Customer Profile is who is like that person that your software or your product is perfect for. It's the early adopter. It's that person that, you know, the first buyer, the people that are gonna use it, your super users. Like if you had to like absolutely create your customer from scratch and you had the ability to do that, that what are the different things, what would they look like? What would they be interested in? What problems do they have? How much capital do they have to spend on your thing? What's your ideal customer profile look like? It's really, really important to get there pretty quickly and understand or at least have a hypothesis around it because it affects a lot of things. It can affect your sales, your marketing, your product, your collateral. It affects a ton of things. Um, it can really speed you up or slow you down if you get it right or wrong. So let's give you a couple examples. So let's talk about a, a B2B enterprise SaaS company. And oftentimes what we see is we see founders say, our ideal customer profile is you know, a Fortune 500 company that is in the food space. Well, like that's kind of it, right? But when I think of ideal customer profile, it's not the corporation, right? That's a piece of it, but it's actually the person within the corporation that's going to be your user and potentially your buyer. Like who within that Fortune 500 company that's in the food space is actually the person that's going to use your thing. Who's going to become your advocate, your champion within the organization? What's their job title? What kind of control do they have over their business unit? What kind of budget do they have? What kind of revenue do they do? So get as specific as you possibly can of what your ideal customer looks like. And it's going to dramatically affect um, how you talk to them, how you reach out to them. Same thing, direct consumer company. You know, oftentimes you'll see like a D2C app company say, yeah, every single person on the planet is our potential market. Well, maybe, but even the biggest direct consumer companies in the world have people that use it more frequently, use their thing more frequently. So maybe you're an art marketplace and you're, you're selling family friendly art, right? So families are our ideal customer profile, but dig a layer even deeper, right? Well, it's moms that actually make the decision on who's gonna buy the art. Well, when are they buying the art? Well, during their pregnancy. So it's a mom that is currently pregnant, right? And thinking about decorating a nursery that is affluent or has this level of fluency or this level of income. And so you narrow in, you dig in really, really close to understand who is that person that's gonna be your early adopter for whatever product or software it is you're selling. And from an early stage company perspective, it's really, really important because we all have limited marketing budgets, we all have limited time, and you know the most valuable thing is like our time. So who are you selling to? Where are you spending time? Who are you talking to? And theoretically, your earliest adopters or the, your earliest marketing campaigns should be the most effective because if you target that ideal customer profile, you should be able to convert them for less dollars than somebody that's slightly outside of it because that ideal customer profile feels the pain. They need the thing that you're selling. They want it. They, it's not a nice to have, it's a must have. And so you should be able to convert them at a higher rate and drive earlier traction for your startup. And then that earlier traction should unlock future rounds of capital where you can test other different customer profiles and other different segments that might not be quite as obvious but you might be able to figure out, yeah, this one was also a good fit for our product or for our service. Or you might be able to figure out, hey, right now, as our current product sits, it's great for this ideal customer profile. But if we just add these two like little features, it opens up another market. And so understanding what your ideal customer profile is today really, really can help you reduce marketing expense, sales expense, and product development expense. You don't need to have crazy 17,000 features. You just need the ones that are exactly right for your go-to-market um, customer. And that's it. So those are a couple tips about ideal customer profile, but also why it's really important to have a good understanding of within your business. Thanks for checking this out. If you like this video, make sure you share, like, subscribe, and ask us questions. We'd love to help you in your entrepreneur journey.